بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah subhanahu wa taala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Hashimi al Qurashi صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. His family members, his companions. May Allah bless them, bless every one of us, and grant us all goodness in this world and the next. My brothers and sisters, one of the miracles of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is nearly every supplication that you and I need in our lives, he has made that supplication already. Nearly every du'a that you need, you want to make, he has already made it. Even though, if you look at it carefully, he did not need it. Subhanallah. The best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah, the greatest in rank, so close to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared him a close friend. Subhanallah. Yet, he asked Allah to protect him from so many things. And he asked Allah to grant him so many things, including forgiveness. If you were to look at one amazing miracle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are taught to follow his example. The best from amongst us is the one who is closest in following the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone who follows him the most would be the best of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. So my brothers and sisters, while we've been taught to follow him, we will find that he made certain supplications so that anyone who followed him would automatically make the same supplications. So he asks for protection from poverty. Subhanallah, he was the Nabi of Allah. Like I said, Afdalul Khalqi wa Akramul Rusul, the greatest of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah. He says, Oh Allah, I seek your protection from poverty. I seek your protection from the adverse effects of old age. Subhanallah. He did not need that dua, he made it. And he tells us, if you don't call out to Allah, Allah will be upset with you. Allah becomes angry with a person who doesn't call out to Allah because one of the primary ways of worshipping your maker is the declaration that he is all able, all capable. He is the one who is the owner of anything and everything that you would like. So you call out to him. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ your Lord has indeed said, call out to me, I will answer you. In Surah Al-Fatiha, right at the beginning, we hear it quite loud and clear. And Allah makes us repeat this verse many times a day. Subhanallah, in prayer, we say, you alone, we worship, you alone, we seek help from. Subhanallah. And so, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَن لَمْ يَسْأَلِ اللَّهَ يَغْضَبْ عَلَيْهِ Whoever doesn't call out to Allah, doesn't ask Allah, Allah becomes angry with that person. So Allah creates needs in your lives, my life, so that we can realize the helplessness that we are in and the fact that we are dependent upon Allah. Take a look at this virus that has overtaken the globe and you will realize very quickly that Allah has proven to us many times, this is one of them, that man, you are helpless. Something you cannot see, you'll be scared of, subhanallah. Or you'll be taking precautions from something you cannot even prove, except with so much of perhaps laboratories, so many laboratories that would have to check for this particular virus, perhaps. I can't see it with the naked eye, nor can you. Allah is saying, you know what, you're so helpless. Imagine the whole world is on its knees. Turn to Allah. Allah alone will grant us cure. So, 
When it comes to something like this, if I am to look at the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, I should immediately find some dua that he made. Some dua that he made. What did he make? Yes, it's there. Subhanallah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal jununi wal judam wa min sayyi'il asqam. Amazing. He said, Oh Allah, I seek your protection from. Now before I translate the rest of it, for someone to say, Oh Allah, I seek your protection from. If it's you and I, it's something I'm scared of, something that I think is going to happen, something that might be looming. You know, someone threatens you and you say, Oh Allah, protect me. I seek your protection from the threats of such and such a person because they threatened you. Or I seek your protection from ill health because you start feeling that I'm getting a bit old or whatever else it may be. But for the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was nothing like that. He made the dua, like they say, it came before any of those needs. He already sat, thought of, and Allah inspired him and revealed to him. So he made these duas. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from leprosy. Because when he saw it in others, he said, Oh Allah, protect me from it. Then he says, from mental illness, Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen, Al Junoon. When you hear the word Majnoon, you know what it means. Because in most of the Asian, or should I say the languages of the Indo-Pak subcontinent and Asia, people would understand that term immediately. Majnoon means a person who's not well. Subhanallah, they are, they are struggling with mental health in one way or another. The Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Allah, I seek your protection from leprosy. I seek your protection from ever being of anything less than a sound mind. I seek your protection from ever being anything less than a sound mind. Keep my mind sound no matter what. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sound minds. And may Allah protect us from all forms of mental illness. And may Allah grant cure to those who may be struggling in that regard. Many people struggle. It's nothing to be ashamed about. We all go through times as human beings where we are stressed. We may feel slightly depressed, but bi-ithnillah, we come out of it by the help of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us cure. Then he continues to say, al-judham. Judham translates as the amputation of limbs, the loss of limbs, the mutilation of limbs. Oh Allah, keep my limbs intact. Today you have your hands, you have your feet, you have your legs, you have everything. You wouldn't like a day to come when the doctor says, listen, we got to take off this leg. It has happened. May Allah protect us. May Allah grant us cure. So he used to make this dua. Today, many of us didn't even know that this dua existed. But thanks to the virus, we found out the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made this dua, not just once, a few times. And you know what? It has come in handy for us. Then he says, وَمِن سَيِّئِ الْأَسْقَامِ O oh Allah, I seek your protection from all sickness and disease that is difficult any hard difficult sickness disease that which is going to cause discomfort to me i seek your protection from that old sickness so if you want allah to protect you the first vaccine is to pray to allah that's the first vaccine we are believers that's why we say that i'm not saying don't take other precautions we should and we must we have been taught that but I am saying your reliance on Allah should be number one. And your prayer to Allah, call out to Allah. Now one might say, and this is a dua, that I have been calling out using this dua for so long. But look, they amputated my leg. And look, I caught the virus. What about that? Well, the answer is, you will always benefit from a dua you make. There is never a time that you don't benefit from a dua that you make. When I ask Allah, Oh Allah, grant me this and grant me that. And I'm not even going through many of the narrations of the Prophet ﷺ. There are hundreds of ahadith that mention the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. In fact, if you were to go onto the internet and search for supplications of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it is mind boggling, mind boggling what he asked for. Please do that. It is refreshing to the iman of all of us. It is strengthening the conviction within all of us. Please do that. 
But when you call out to Allah, Allah has heard your dua. He will give you a reward for it to begin with. Number one, you achieve a rank in the eyes of Allah because you called out to him. I will not call out to someone whom I don't believe has the solution to what I'm seeking the solution for. You see a poor person or a person on the street, you need a thousand dollars. Are you going to go to this guy who's limping with tatty clothing and say, brother, please give me a thousand dollars. You won't because you know, chances are, I'm not going to get it. Trust me in Zimbabwe, you never know. May Allah grant us ease. But my brothers and sisters, on a more realistic note, you would probably look at someone who looks wealthy, whom you think perhaps this person might be able to give me, and you ask them, Allah is Rabbul Alameen, walillahi al-mathalul a'la. The example of Allah is the highest. Allah is the owner of everything. When you have asked Him for something, it means you believe He has it. You believe He can give it to you. That's why you are asking Him. That alone is an ibadah. It's an act of worship. To call out to Allah is actually worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe he has it. If someone is sick, oh Allah cure me. What happened? I have actually acknowledged Allah is a shafi. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Ishfi mardana wa mardal muslimin. Grant cure to our sick, those who are ill from amongst us and from among all the muslimin and grant Rahma and mercy to the dead from amongst us and all the dead of the mu'mineen. And oh Allah, have mercy on us the day we join them in the graveyards. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. Look at how powerful these duas are. So number one, you get a rank in the eyes of Allah because you have worshipped him. It is an act of worship to call out to Allah, call out to him. Secondly, in the hereafter, you will see a reward and a recompense for what you asked for Allah in the world. Whether you got it or not is a secondary thing in this world. I'm going to get to that. So if I asked Allah every day for so many things, Allah never gets tired. It's amazing how Allah gets angry if you don't ask him and man gets angry when you ask him. Allah says, when you ask me a lot, I get happier. And man, when you ask him a lot, he runs away from you. He doesn't want to see you. Allah says, you come to me with dua, I will come to you even faster. Subhanallah. Man, ask him for something. See him again, say, brother, just a reminder. Third time, reminder. Fourth time, when you're entering that door of the masjid, he will walk out from this door. Subhanallah. He knows this brother is going to irritate me. With Allah, it's the other way around. You come into the masjid to cry to Allah. You feel welcome. You feel good. By the time you walk out, you say, I asked Allah. And I'm convinced I'm going to get it. So this is why we say, this is Allah. Ask him. Don't be shy. Don't, don't stop. Don't hold back. Ask him anything and everything. Think up the future, oh Allah, myself, my children, my health. When you see anyone struggling, oh Allah, protect me from that and grant them protection as well. When you ask Allah for someone else, Allah grants you for yourself the same or better. So you achieve a rank in the hereafter. You will see a reward for it in the hereafter. And perhaps Allah will give you lots of gifts in the hereafter. Favors in the hereafter simply because... You asked him so many things, he kept the response of that for the hereafter. Amazing. I had a little youngster who said, I want to make a dua to Allah many years ago. He says, I ask Allah, oh Allah, grant me a Bugatti. At the time, the Bugatti was, you know, uh, one of the cars considered decent by the youngsters. Now you sit and you think that's his dua, according to his age, perhaps. In my mind, I'm thinking, imagine one day, if he never ever got that in this world, when he goes to the hereafter and he sees something amazing, amazing, mind boggling beyond his imagination. And Allah says, remember one day you made a dua like this? Yes. Well, this is a recompense for that dua. Just because you worshipped us and you asked us sincerely for something, we felt it was better to keep it for you in the hereafter. That's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He says certain things, Allah, yaddakhiruhu fil akhirah. He will keep it for him for the hereafter. So your dua never goes to waste. Then sometimes Allah says, hang on. We know what you are asking for right now is not better for you, your deen, your dunya and your akhirah. So we will give you something else in return for that. 
You're asking Allah, Oh Allah, I really want the job at that man's place. Allah says, You don't know that man. For now he is smiling. Work for him. He will be swearing you. We don't want you to go through that. A lot of us, we show a nice face. Let someone work for you. You treat them like dirt. So Allah says, You know what? Best, stay away. Keep your respect. We want to protect you. You rather stay away. No business dealing with that man. Don't, we don't want you there. You are crying. We know better than you. It's not good for you. When you go there, you will cry more. Rather you cry little now. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. So Allah says, we gave you. But we gave you something better than what you asked us for. Even though you don't know. Some people say, can I ask to marry a particular person by name? The answer is obviously. You ask Allah anything. So then why isn't Allah giving me that particular person by name? I don't want to lie to you and say there must have been a mistake in the birth certificate. But what I will say is that Allah might know something you don't know. Perhaps later on you won't get along. Perhaps you might have children who will be such a great challenge, whether it be disability or the death of the children later on, that you might not cope with the blessings of Allah will determine that we're not going to let you go through that. Wait, trust us. We will give you something better. Whether you realize it or not in the hereafter, we'll just prove it to you. If you want that, may Allah grant us ease. So my brothers and sisters understand your dua doesn't go to waste. Call out to Allah. A man says, Oh Allah, protect me from my limbs being amputated. The limbs are amputated. If he bears patience and understands that was the will and decree of Allah in the hereafter, he will have such a massive reward for the patience that he bore. Allah wanted it for you. Similarly, people have said, Oh, you know, you taught us a dua to make for protection against the coronavirus. And I made that dua a hundred times a day, but I still got the virus. My brother, that is the taqdeer of Allah, the destiny of Allah. Your dua did not go wasted, but Allah might reduce the symptoms of that particular disease as a result of your dua. Some people have severe symptoms, some have light. Who knows why? Allah might bring about a lot of goodness as a result of what you went through, perhaps. You might be able to help so many others. Maybe your doors of sustenance might open as a result of this. So don't think Allah didn't answer. Allah has kept it. He knows what's better for you. You must say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Oh Allah, I made the dua. I thank you that you have given me something. I'm managing, I'm coping. Other people lost their lives. And guess what? My brothers and sisters, even if you lost your life, for as long as you had that conviction in Allah, you were trying to follow the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and you were a decent person, your akhirah will be much better than the hereafter. Uh, sorry, than this life. No comparison. No comparison. Your akhirah, your hereafter will be much better than this life. No comparison. Don't worry. Ultimately, you have to go. I have to go. When you pass away, what will they say? Rahmatullahi alayhi. May Allah have mercy. And Allah will have mercy. May Allah have mercy on all of us. May Allah grant us a good death where he is pleased with us. So my brothers and sisters, I ask you to look in to the supplications of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Like I said, it's so easy. We use our phones. If I told you there's a bargain this afternoon, it's a yellow Friday. So we're going to be having 50% off on this and on that. People will start looking and checking. And what will they do? They will start buying things they don't need sometimes because hey, I got 70% of this thing. Brother, did you need it? That's the question. You wasted 30% of the money on this thing here. You didn't even need it. But you said, no, but it was a bargain. You start looking for it. You check it because you know I'm going to gain. I'm telling you, check the same phone for something else. What is it? Search supplications of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Dua of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Go through them. Like I said, your iman will be refreshed. By that I mean you become strengthened in your conviction and you are happy as a mu'min. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made many, many duas. He says, Oh Allah, protect me from old age, protect me from sickness. Oh Allah, strengthen my iman, grant me goodness, protect my uh, progeny. Oh Allah, grant this and that. So many things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that this man did not need all of that. Like I say, he sought forgiveness a hundred times a day, according to a narration. If we followed him, wouldn't we also seek forgiveness at least a few times a day? 
Wouldn't we also seek forgiveness at least a few times a day? So in this way, my brothers and sisters, we will always call out to Allah. Allahumma inna. Now when we say inna, it's because we are plural. If you say inni, it's one person. Inna na'udhu bik. We seek your protection. Min al-baras wal junoon wal judam wa min sayyi il asqam. We want your protection from leprosy, from mental illness, from amputation or mutilation of limbs, and from viruses, diseases, sicknesses. Protect us from it. That's the dua. Then the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Ishfi mardana wa marda al muslimin. It's important for us to make that dua as well. May Allah grant us all goodness and protection. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.